Okay, so the unit rate in gallons per minute, I write down gallons over minutes. I pick any one of my columns. I write down the numbers for gallons, which in my case was eight. The number of minutes was four. I do the division and that tells me two gallons per minute. Okay, so this is linking back to stuff that we did on our previous homework assignments, is finding unit rates. So a unit rate is a proportional relationship. So that's a key point. The unit rate is a proportional relationship. Um, part C, when ratios are equivalent, they all have the same unit rate. In a proportional relationship, the unit rate is called the constant of proportionality. What is the constant of proportionality for gallons to minutes? Well, they say the unit rate is called the constant of proportionality. In part B, we calculated the unit rate. The unit rate was two gallons per minute. So if the unit rate is two gallons per minute, the constant of proportionality is also gonna be two gallons per minute. The next thing says, use the constant of proportionality to write an equation that shows the number of gallons used during a shower nine minutes long. So they tell me to use the letter G for gallons and M for minutes. The number of gallons depends on the number of minutes the shower you took, okay? The number of gallons depends on the number of minutes. Okay, so any, when I think about the word depends, that's gonna tell me gallons equals something time my number of minutes. So, and we just use our constant of proportionality there. So the gallons is equal to two times the number of minutes. The next one, what is the unit rate for minutes per gallon of water. Let me go to the... That should be page 53 of the iReady book. Notice I had to break page 53 up into multiple screens. Okay. Part E, what is the unit rate for minutes per gallon? So if I want to calculate a unit rate, I write what I want, and then I put the numbers in. I am going to pick a different column. Let's pick this column. I write my minutes on top. I write my gallons on the bottom. I simplify the fraction, and I get one half minute per gallon. F, what is the constant of proportionality of this relationship in minutes of showering to water in gallons? The constant of proportionality is the exact same thing as my unit rate. I'm not gonna copy it again. Now it says to write an equation that shows the length of the shower in minutes, equal to something times the number of gallons I used. I already did A and B, they were on the previous slide. And again, you'll get copies of these slides at the end of the lecture. So it says, so on this previous equation, where I put the two next to the variable, in this equation, I'm going to put the one-half next to that variable, and that's going to give me that equation. So I can, write, I can write two different unit rates for this table of values. One is minutes per gallon. The other one is gallons per minute. And one thing you should notice about the two unit rates. 
Two and one half are what they call reciprocals, reciprocals of each other. Okay, another way that I can write two is two over one. And then one half is one over two. Basically, a reciprocal means you just flip the uh, you flip the fraction over. So anytime you're writing two different unit rates for the same data set, that's one way you can check to see if you got the right answer after simplifying to see if they are reciprocals of each other. And that's not in the lesson. That's one of Mr. Taylor's cute little map hacks. So we should be to the next section where it says model it. So the first way we can model a proportional relationship is with a data table. The second way we can model a proportional relationship is with double number lines. Okay, so what I would like you to do is I would like you guys to think about A and B and see if you can come up with the answer for the constant of proportionality and the equation that represents square feet of wall by G gallons. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to work on that. I want you to look at what we have in the double number lines and, can, and then try to answer question B based off of the information we have. So I want you to think Think about A, and I want you to try B. I'm going to give you a little bit of time for that. I'm going to go back a slide really quick. And if I go back a slide, you see I have a row of times and a row of gallons. If I go forward a slide, I have a row of square feet and a row of gallons of paint. The thing that you have with a double number line is you have equal increments right here. All these increments are equal. So that's one thing I want to write down. My double number line has equal increments. Okay. Um, what I can do is I can just pretend that this double number line that I have right here is just like a table of values that we had on the previous page. Okay. So here's one that's really neat is when I talked about unit rates the first time, I said a unit rate is a fraction or a ratio whose denominator is one. I can look at this table of values or this double number line, and I can see a fraction that's gonna have a denominator of one. And that's right here, okay? And that is 400 square feet per gallon. And guess what that is? That 400 square feet per gallon is your unit rate. And we said the unit rate is our constant of proportionality. And now I can write the equation. The square feet of wall space depends, that I can cover depends upon the number of gallons I use. I get 400 square feet per gallon that I use. So that would be the equation that I would write. 
Now, if I were to simplify any of these other fractions, for example, 100 divided by one quarter, I could rewrite this. Dividing by a fraction means to flip it over and multiply. That would be 100, flip the one quarter over. I can write the 100 as 100 over one. Again, I'm still gonna get 400 over one, which is 400. So it did not matter which one I used, but because I used the one that already had the denominator of one, I was able to um, write the fraction, I was able to write the unit rate without actually doing any math. So if you're trying to find the unit rate um, easily and one of your things has a one in it, that would be the one that you would want to use. So the next ones, do the table and double number lines show the same constants of proportionality? How can I tell? Okay. What do I have to add to one to get to three? Somebody in chat or somebody show me your fingers. There we go. So I'm gonna add two. And if I add two here, then going from here to here, I am adding 16. And again, if I add two here, I add 16. So what I wanna do is I wanna look and I wanna see my constant of proportionality on this one is 2 sixteenths or 1 eighth. And I can do the same thing on the double number line. To go from zero to two, I add two. I'm adding another two. I'm adding another two. I'm adding 16, 16. 16, notice how they're constant on the top, then constant on the bottom. This constant of proportionality is 2 sixteenths, which would be 1 eighth. Okay, so um, notice the first one, it gave me one mug, three mugs, five mugs. The second one gave me zero, two, four, and six mugs. Even though they have different numbers of mugs, because for every two mugs, I go up $16, I'm still going to have the same constant of proportionality. And I'm going to show you Mr. Taylor's shortcut for this next one. Use any model to show a proportional relationship with a constant of proportionality of four. My favorite model is the table. So what I'm going to do is on the top row, I start at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can go on forever. And then what I'm gonna to do to get a constant of proportionality of four is I'm gonna multiply each of those top numbers by four. So zero times four is four, one times four is, no, zero times four is zero. Mr. Taylor, learn your math. One times four is four, then eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. So, that is an easy way to do it. If I wanted to use a double number line, what I would do is I would make a ticket zero and a ticket one. Then I would make another ticket zero and then I would make a ticket four. And then to extend that double number line, the same distance between zero and one, I can make another tick and call it two the same distance between zero and four, I can make that second tick and call it eight. You can use a lot of space if you're using a double number line. That's why I like to use a table. If anybody has any questions in general about double number lines or the data table, how I was getting those answers, please type them in the chat. Okay, I'm going to continue. So what we're going to do now is I posted your next homework assignment. I am going to do three out of the four homework problems. We're going to do them in class. The last problem, the one I didn't do, you still need to do that before you submit your homework. 
And then I, the actual homework you're going to do is quiz three. So I'm doing, so you're going to get a quiz grade for doing the homework tonight, and then this homework grade for getting most of it done in class. Okay? Says Josie is making pizza dough. Complete the double number line by filling in the missing values, then write an equation that models the relationship between the total cups of flour and the number of batches. So my equation is going to be C equals something in. And we're going to come up with that something. Okay? So I look at the double number line. I notice on the bottom, each tick mark is going up by one. So the bottom ones should be fairly easy for me. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five. Then on the top, each one is going up by three quarters. So if I take three quarters and I give you another three quarters, how much money do I have? I have a dollar fifty. And the way I would represent a dollar fifty would be one and a half dollars. And then I add three more quarters to it. I would have two dollars and twenty-five cents, which is two and a quarter. Any time that I use I'm using fractions that has anything that I can use with a money type of representation, like I did those circles on the board for quarters. I use that because I, that way I don't have to think three quarters is 0 0.75, 0 0.75 times two is 1.5 and then convert it back to a fraction. I can just visually represent it kind of dollars like I did there. So that's the answer to the first homework problem. Homework problem two. Lily bought each of her friends a pair of colorful socks that cost $5.50. Complete the table to show how much Lily paid to buy different numbers of socks. Oh, I forgot to write the equation. So when I write the equation, I am looking for the one that has the one down here. Okay? And what's left on the top is what's going to be in front of that number in. So the number of cups of flour is three quarters times the number of batches I want to make. So that I wanted to make sure to emphasize that's how where I got that from. Complete the table and then write an equation that shows the total cost for so many pairs of socks. So again, the table was just like the number line. I'm going to fill in the easy ones first. One, two, three, four five, and then I need to fill in the numbers here. Well, these numbers are just the one, two, three, four, five times five dollars and fifty cents. So one times five fifty is five fifty. Okay, two times five fifty is eleven. They already gave it to us. Three times five fifty is going to be 11 plus the 550, which is 1650. Four times 550 is just two times the two, which would be 22. And there's two ways I can come up with the five really easily. I can add either the two plus the three ones, or I could add the four plus the one. And that's. Can you slow down? So I'm just going to stop there until you guys get that copy. So the way I got the one, the one came from the problem. The way I got the three is I got the three by adding the one and the two together. I didn't do any multiplication. The way I got the four, I got the four by taking an easy thing I could do and multiplying it by two. 11 times two is 22. And the way I can get the five is either add the one number to the four number, or I can add the two number to the three number. So the only thing I had to do for multiplication in this one is to be able to multiply a number by two, and an easy number by two, which was 11. Alternatively, you could have done one times 550 and got the 550. Two times the 550 gives you 11. 
3 times the 550 gives you the 1650. And then 4 times 550 is 22. But I like to find tricks so I don't even have to think about me needing to pick up the calculator. Um, addition is my friend. And anytime I can do addition or multiply by the number 2, which I think is a fairly straightforward number to multiply by, I use those tricks in order to help me save time. If you need more time to fill in that table, please let me know. I'm going to I'm going to put one more number on the screen. Yes, you can. And it may be in three videos when I get it posted. So the last part of the equation is I need to figure out what the unit rate is. The unit rate is the one that has a denominator of one. So I look at my data table, and if I have one of them that has a denominator of one, which is our first one right here, that is my unit rate, which is the number that I'm going to put into my equation. So the equation that I need is the cost is going to be 550 times the number of pairs of socks that I buy or that Lily buys. Okay. Um, by the time you're in high school, you guys are in seventh grade now, by the time you're in high school, you should not need the table to think about it. You should be able to be basically be able to write the equation just from that first sentence. So Lily buy each of her friends a pair of colorful socks that cost 550, write an equation for the total cost. Okay, it's gonna skip the data table in the middle by the time you get to high school. So in seventh grade, we're introducing this stuff. So by the time you get to high school, this is hopefully gonna be the third or fourth or fifth time you've seen some of this stuff and it will become easier for you. So it's okay if your brain is overloaded a little bit right now. That means we're making it grow, okay? Um, but by the time you get to high school, this will be one of those things that's just like muscle memory for you. And the last one I'm gonna do is the last problem. I believe it's number four. I think, is there five problems? Yep, there's only four problems, so I'm doing problem four. Mrs. Lopez types at a constant rate. The constant of proportionality is the number of words she types and the number of minutes she types. So she types in words per minute. It says write an equation to show this relationship. So the number of words is equal to something times the number of minutes, and that something is the only number that we have in the problem. So she, they say she types at 38 words per minute. So words is going to be equal to 38 times the number of minutes I type. So like I said, we're slowly building you so you could just look at the words that they give you and be able to write the equation for it. Okay. The hardest part in math is taking those words and then turning them into an equation that I can just start sticking numbers in. And if I need to use a calculator or a spreadsheet or some other tool to come up with the um, answers that it's desiring. So I'm going to stop the recording. If I can find the button.